What's up Internet? This is Hourglass Gaming. For today's video, I want to talk about Borderlands the pre-sequel and how it isn't being released on the Xbox One or PlayStation 4, and why that's a huge disappointment for me. In case it's not perfectly obvious, the footage playing isn't my own. It's from a trailer for the game that came out a little while ago. Borderlands has always been a series that I feel kind of bipolar about. On one hand, I love the combat, the classes, the enemies, the art style, and the sheer size of the games. On the other hand, the moment I finished the first Borderlands, I never touched the game again, because the ending was such a spectacular disappointment. After that, I decided I wasn't going to get Borderlands 2, and was drawn back in by Claptrap and Dubstep. But then, when I played the game, I felt like it took quest design too far. When I sought solutions for problems, it turned out that those solutions had their own set of problems that needed solving, and within those inner problems was a deeper set of inner problems that needed their own solutions. The chain seemed to go on forever, so that simple tax became drawn-out escapades. Gameplay got boring, and I lost my interest somewhere in the game's expansion content. I then once again decided that I wasn't going to buy the next Borderlands. But then this damn trailer came out, and it's talking about gender equality, making up words out of the halves of other words, Heart of Darkness, and the Nietzschean inner conflict, and now I have to give them my money. But this newfound need was stymied by one small issue. Borderlands, the pre-sequel, will be available on PC, the Xbox 360, and the PlayStation 3. I still own an Xbox 360, but it's deep somewhere in a garage back where I grew up. And Gearbox's decision to remain last gen is frustrating on more fronts than just the fact that I'd need to dig up the old Xbox to play Borderlands. It's also frustrating because, by choosing to make the game on the Xbox 360 instead of the Xbox One, Borderlands and other games still shackled to last generation machines are limited in what they will be. So far, Xbox One releases have been decidedly lackluster in the ways that they've been pushing game technology forward. Call of Duty Ghosts was a new layer of gloss on the last Call of Duty. Battlefield joined the player count that PCs have had, but besides that wasn't revolutionary in any significant way. Titanfall was amazing, but could have been made without the Xbox One just fine. And Destiny isn't a revolution in video game RPGs at all. None of these games has really explored what's available with the Xbox One. And that's a pretty big disappointment. It will likely take a few more years before we really start to see big changes in games, but for now, their developers seem mostly still to be thinking with last-gen limitations in mind. The new game, Shadow of Mordor, is an excellent example of a game that is pushing what can be done forward. The nemesis system in the game creates an evolving, intelligent enemy command structure that remembers and adapts to player actions. The nemesis system is more limited on the Xbox 360. This means that Monolith, Shadow of Mordor's developer, made Shadow of Mordor for the new generation, and then brought as much of their game back onto the last gen as they could. They developed for the best technology available, and then made it work for older platforms, instead of developing for machines decades old, and then upgrading the graphics and putting the game on the new generation. I'm thusly frustrated by Gearbox's decision to remain with last-gen platforms, because it means that the game hasn't been pushed nearly as far as it might have been. Looking at the features that Borderlands the pre-sequel offers, there doesn't appear to be anything in the game that couldn't have existed three years ago. The financial basis for the decision is sound. There are still millions of operating Xbox 360s in the world, and the number of Xbox Ones is comparatively small. There's a bigger market in the last gen, but I would hope that developers would want to push the limits of what their games are capable of, rather than adding a few new weapon types and turning down the gravity on their game engine. I'm frustrated by today's games, but this got me thinking about what games might look like in the future. Take Alien Isolation, which comes out tomorrow. The game features a roving alien, which is not set on a defined path, but which is instead, reportedly, actively hunting for you and learning from your decision. This is awesome, but it's the kind of thing that will only get more thoroughly implemented and explored as we continue to push video games to their limit. Destiny, for example. The game's enemies become more intelligent and lethal based on the set difficulty of the mission or strike and what modifiers are applied to it. But what if, instead, they cataloged your actions and adapted to fight you? So you like fully automatic weapons? They'll counter with sniper units. So you like to snipe? They'll counter with close combat units. You save your heavy ammunition for the final boss? They'll throw the heavy stuff at you early and try to get you to spend it. The reason you can't use a pistol with your riot shield in Battlefield is that doing so isn't compatible with the 360. Why this is the case is a matter for game designers and beyond my expertise. But the point is, the features that we aren't getting in our games, be they small points like not getting pistols with riot shields, or greater ones like an intelligent and adaptive enemy system, are absent because developers are still tied to last generation machines. And it's unlikely that we'll see anything truly revolutionary until developers make the switch and develop primarily for the newer generation.
This sort of got away from Borderlands, but the main message is that I don't think I'll get the pre-sequel. Not because I don't want to, but because it's been developed for old machines. I don't care about the graphics, I care about what the game could be, and as long as it's being developed primarily for the last gen, it isn't going to be pushing boundaries. But what do you guys think? Are you an Xbox 360 player, still happy that new games are being released for your system? Or have you made the switch? Are you eagerly awaiting the next great game that will change everything? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like more game-related commentary, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.